Hello and welcome to Next Generation Behavioral Health. 10 minute tips for modernizing patient care. All right, I'm Dr. Christina Armstrong. And I'm Dr. Julie Kin. We've been working in the Department of Defense with the mission to use technology like mobile phones, internet, games, and other IT to help military and veteran healthcare. We also travel all across the country training military providers on how to integrate health technology into clinical practice. In this podcast, we're going to share some of the answers to the most common questions we get. And we do it in 10 minutes or you get your money back. But usually we answer the questions and this time we get to ask the questions. So I'm really excited about that. Yes. In the last couple episodes, we've been talking about what mobile health is, how to safely choose an app, how to prescribe apps. Today, we have Dr. Tim Hoyt. Dr. Hoyt is the branch chief of Connected Health in the Defense Health Agency's Clinical Support Division. We're excited to have you here because you have been a service member and you've used these mobile apps and other resources in a healthcare setting with military beneficiaries. And you've probably also seen a lot of changes in the way technology has been used in the military over time. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Hoyt. Of course, I'm always happy to help. We have lots of questions for you today. Uh, we've got to do it in 10 minutes or less though. So let's start off by, tell us a little bit about your military clinical experience. My military experience was pretty varied. I got to go to several military hospitals back when I was still a lieutenant and then uh, came on active duty as an intern and resident and then deployed to Afghanistan a few years ago with a brigade combat team as their officer in charge of behavioral health. After that, I came back and, and helped stand up some of the uh, embedded behavioral health clinics here on Joint Base lewis McCord, and have subsequently come through our intensive outpatient program. Uh, after my assignment at the intensive outpatient program, I moved over to the Defense Health Agency, uh, where I became the uh, supervisor and the branch chief for Connected Health. We know that our products are used CONUS, and I'm just wondering about OCONUS. We did see a lot of use of technology when I was out in the field. I, I was deployed at a time where people did have a lot of access to technology. You could purchase Wi-Fi there on the, the forward operating base where I was primarily stationed, and, and you could really ha have a lot of integration back at home. I mean, uh, some... People got, got into trouble even because they were Skyping with home too much in the course ah. of a day and, uh, and were, were getting in trouble. So the, the technology was there and was already fairly ubiquitous. And people had access to their smartphones. So we were able to get several people to start using T2 products when we were downrange. Things like Breathe to Relax and the Virtual Hope Box, things that you know could be used there to help support and make sure that they had a, a means of you know, staying connected to psychological health, even when they were away from the, the forward bases. Wow. How do you think the mobile health movement has influenced behavioral health in the military? Some of the things that we've thought about in the past is how do we cram as much intervention as we can into the hour in a week that we might meet with a patient? Mobile technology has allowed us to get interventions and assessments into the pockets of these service members so that any downtime that they've got, you know, our products potentially are there instead, that they can utilize that as a source of resilience and a source of psychological benefit uh, right there in the moment, anytime that they're there with their phones. And we already know that phones are a, a ubiquitous part of, of all of these service members' lives. So what advice do's or don'ts would you have for other providers and care teams? I think it begins and ends with our own provider's comfort with using these devices. Mm. Um, if, if you want to start integrating more technology into your care, it really comes down to download these for yourselves and, and start using this uh, a, as a way to, to show that benefit. Right. For example, Recently, the app was released, uh, the CBTI coach. You know, this is one that I think we had partnered with the VA on. This is yep. an extremely valuable app to track sleep. Now, who among us sleeps so well that they couldn't you know, sleep a little bit better or improve their sleep a little bit? And this, for me, was a, a great 
practice app, one that I could start using. It would remind me to fill out my sleep diary. It would remind me to, you know, maybe update my sleep prescription or look at how many hours I was sleeping in a you know given time period. The, the personal use of these technologies really helps you see the benefits. And, oh, and then once you've been able to, to play with those things and, and use them for yourself, it's that much easier to cross over and recommend them for your patients. Right. What do you think are the barriers? I think the first one that we kind of addressed is familiarity, knowing that these things are there, with the second layer being knowing that these things are safe. I mean, if you go to the app store, you've got however many hundreds of thousands of apps You'll see things like hypnosis or walrus-assisted therapy for PTSD, and it's really hard to know what, what's the best place to start. When I was a, a clinic chief, I would not want to buy off on my clinicians delving into things that are not empirically supported. That, that's such a good reminder because it's more than just mobile health technology. That goes for anything we do with our patients, of course. Definitely. Another question for you. Do you have any tips for civilian providers that might not be obvious to us? It, it can open doors more quickly if you're able to have some familiarity, if you're willing to, to go the extra mile and, and learn things like you know, military customs and courtesies or the, the reason that we wear our hat in a certain way. Sometimes the, the civilian providers will come in and just say, well, I'd rather just call everyone by their first name. And, and that can be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Switching gears a little bit to mobile technology, there can sometimes be a gap between a clinician who may be able to afford higher end technology and, and really wants to go and explore you know, having the latest and greatest, having the, the next generation smartwatch and right. you know, really upgraded technology. And although our service members do have some of that technology, it, it may be that they're on a little bit more of a budget living in the barracks or, you know, having a small family to, to take care of on a soldier's salary. We, we can't always expect that they're going to have the same technology familiarity or the same types of technology at their fingertips. One example might just be access to a computer. Um, although the service member may have a smartphone, we, we can't always expect that they're just going to go straight home or straight back to their company and, and have access to a computer right there. Often there's just a few shared computers within a company headquarters and they might not have the access that that we want them to. You know, this is another example of why pushing compatible mobile technologies out to these service members we can really help overcome barriers and get them better access to care that, that we may not realize they, they haven't had in the past. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your experience with us. And I hope that you've enjoyed yourself at least a little bit so that we can press on you to come back again. Of course, I'm always happy to help. Thank you so much, Dr. Hoyt, for joining us today. That was Dr. Tim Hoyt. To learn about our other free health resources for the military community, please connect with us on Facebook and Twitter at Military Health. You can learn about our other podcasts, mobile apps, and websites. Thank you so much to those of you who have rated us and reviewed us on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. Next Generation Behavioral Health is produced by the Defense Health Agency.